if if you were genuine throughout the experiment then it's successful okay but if you are going to be in the experiment and pretend okay and try to like outsmart things and people then it won't be successful that's why there's like relationships that came out and they do very well yeah yeah that's why there's those that looked good mm-hmm. on tv <laughs> yeah <laughs> but now yeah yeah i think if 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 really you went there with the 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 plan to build yourself and your relationship you came out very strong yeah, you came yeah. out very good Um, so you are forming part of our Power Woman series, Power of Woman, where this August we're celebrating women, whether you are super influential, whether you're known for breaking barriers, or you're just ordinary. The, the You're a girl's girl. The, the other girl can relate to you. Yeah. Um, she looks at you and she's like, I've gone through that. And this is how Ruth dealt with it. And I will deal with it like that to also... Ruth didn't deal with it like that and I'm learning from her mistake. Yeah. So it's important to find that balance when we have these conversations with women because oftentimes women who are given platforms are just women who are known for these many degrees, this net worth. Um, oh, do you know what I mean? Yeah. So thank you so much for coming to our show. First and foremost, Ruth, how's your heart? How have you been doing? Yeah, my, my heart is actually at peace yeah, yeah my heart is filled with gratitude yeah and i've been doing quite very well mm-hmm, mm-hmm. i don't want to lie i think way more than anything god has came through for me all right like, yeah 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 because <laughs> i think from when people saw me mm-hmm. like that that space where i was before mm-hmm. nah I'm too far now. You're too far ahead. I'm too far now. What does what does gratitude mean to you? Like, what does it do for your life? Because I can see you, you you're in an era of just being grateful for where you are. I think for me, gratitude is um, looking back at where mm-hmm. you come from, mm-hmm. looking at where you are now, mm-hmm. and also I think with me, it's the thing of have you ever seen where maybe you you've like been dreaming of things where you're like, I wish to be there one day. And then now you you're there. Sure, you're like, sure, sure. I've been, I've been like seeing this. It was okay. One day I wish I could like have this. Yeah. One day I wish for this. Yeah. But then now it's yeah. I think way more than anything, yo. I don't know, but yeah. 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 It, it's it's been that thing for me. How do you affect the gratitude? So for example, um, Oprah Winfrey. I, I learned this about seven years ago. Um, I haven't been that great recently at maintaining it. But she said, keep a diary next to your bedside table and just every day write three things that you're grateful for that happened. Whether it, I'm grateful that I wasn't late for my meeting. I'm grateful that I got a new job. So it can be that small or that big, depending on how yeah. you feel. So in, in in your sense, it doesn't have to be that practical. How do you constantly practice gratitude in your life? I think what I do is almost from time to time, I, I like having conversations with people. Mm-hmm. So I my way of showing gratitude or my way of like, I don't know, making sure that people understand that I'm grateful. Mm-hmm. I hold conversations with people. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. say to you like, look at this, look at that. Yeah, like this yeah. is how far I've come. Yeah. But what I do the most is like every day yeah. I pray and thank God. Sometimes yeah, I yeah. just like kneel down and say, God, I'm grateful that you've kept me this far. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful that you opened doors that I was knocking at. Mm-hmm. I'm grateful that you gave me things that I know mm-hmm. I'm not worthy of having. Mm-hmm. A lot of things. Sometimes I just like, mm-hmm. I don't know. Sometimes I pray to God and say, God, I wish you can come through for other people mm-hmm. the way I think you've come through for me. Sure. Or I think sometimes I say, God, I pray that other people see you the way I see you. Mm-hmm. Sometimes I say that, God, I wish that... I don't know, man. I feel like God has like lifted me up to like a point where I've never thought I would be. Yeah, yeah. And I wish for people to like have that. I don't know, man. 
I don't know if it makes sense. It definitely does. Um, uh, we started off this Power of Women series with Pastor Sarah Jakes, the international Pastor Sarah Jakes. And she said to me when she was sitting on the chair that I never even thought that part of my purpose, part of my gifting, part of the grace that God was going to give me was to just be here in South Africa and minister to other people. So even people at that level, when they are just humble and remain in God, they still understand that the plan is bigger than you can ever think. Yeah. And you have to remain grateful, you know? Yes. I think sometimes we, I think we, we dole so much in what's my purpose. Sometimes yeah, your purpose yeah. is to just be yourself. Yeah, like just yeah. be you. Yeah, yeah. If you feel happy, be happy. If you feel grateful, be grateful. If you feel not okay, it's okay to break down also. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. But just be out there, be mm -hmm. you. Because some, there's someone out there that's maybe like going through something. They are afraid to like, leave their truth out like all out there yeah yeah you see, like i don't know how to put this sometimes you've got your bad moments uh -huh. it's okay for people to say that you're having your bad moments mm -hmm. but other people don't want to be seen sure it's okay when you like at your happiest people yeah, must yeah, see yeah, people yeah. must see that life is a has, roller coaster man. It like phases. it goes like exactly yeah. there's phases yeah so there's nothing wrong with you crying in public yeah there's nothing wrong How? with you like yeah. losing everything in public yeah there's nothing wrong with Oof. you like going through the biggest shame yeah, in yeah, public. Yeah, yeah, There's yeah. nothing wrong with you embracing or rejoicing in Yo, public. Yeah, 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 yeah. But what I always say is that I don't like talking about things that broke me. Mm -hmm. I don't mind people seeing me break down. I don't mind people seeing me going through the worst. But I don't like talking about bad things that happened to me or things that broke me. Because... For me, it feels more like I'm embracing those things. I like talking about good things. Mm -hmm. I like talking about how far God has taken me, how far life has taken me, like the lot of things I've learned and, 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 yeah. You speak about God has lifted you up so much that you sometimes feel unworthy and yeah. non-deserving for the things that God has given you. Take me through why you feel unworthy. What parts of your life make you feel unworthy? You will. Oh, it's a lot of things, actually. Number one, you look at where you come from. Sure. You look at um, the things you've, like, encountered in life mm. and the failures also. Mm -hmm. Number one, I come from a very small town. It's not too small, but I come in, like, the corner of that town, mm -hmm. if you get what I mean. Mm -hmm. I'm from KZN. Mm -hmm. I grew up in... Okay, we like saying it's Newcastle, mm -hmm. but it's not Newcastle. It's more on the side of Danhausen. Okay. But that place, like... Nothing happens. <laughs> no. Even if, like, you can meet someone in town and be like, yeah, yeah I mean, I'm like, yeah. yeah There's yeah. someone like this, I'm like, you know? Yeah. So you look at where you come from. Sure. You look at um, the schools that you went to. Sure. We never went to, like, there's big schools and whatnot. With the twang. Exactly. <laughs> we just learned all these things along sure. the way. Sure, You also look at, like, how far you've come. Mm. I mean, I had a, a child when I was 19. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So already when you have a child that young, nobody thinks you can go far in life. Sure. But then, like, you push, you push, and then, yeah, luckily, by God's grace, I ended up in varsity and whatnot. I graduated, but then I never got a job. Mm -hmm. That's another thing. Sure. So now you're looking at things, and you're like, okay, is it going to come together? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And Will then, it ever come together? I'm telling you, yeah. I remember there was a point where I wasn't even working. Hence, I'm saying, the reason people would, like, look at me from the show, when they see me now, they're like, bro, you look different. It's because life was different then. I'm somewhere else now. There was a time where I wasn't working, like things were not promising. But I remember praying, saying, mm. God, I thank you that even though it doesn't seem promising, mm. I keep seeing light at the end of the I'm telling you, like, you think you had a bad day today. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow you have the worst. Yeah. You think today's the worst. <laughs> I'm telling it. No, yeah. <laughs> I can't even say. Yeah. But then it was that thing where you look at where you come from. Like it, it just never got better. Mm -hmm. It just never got better. And when I say it never got better, have you seen where like relationship wise, it's not working mm -hmm. out. With friends, it's not working out. Jobs, it's not working out. Your family's falling apart. Like everything's just a mess. Yeah, yeah and there's yeah. no hope. Yeah. But then when you look at like how far you've come, and when you look at the things that you wish you used to wish for. Mm -hmm. And you're like, okay, here I am now. Mm -hmm. How did I get here? Mm -hmm. But also I'm grateful that God kept me. 
because I remember as hard as it was, I used to like have dreams. Okay. Where you can see, okay, in this dream, okay, luckily um, I'm that privileged to can understand my dreams. So it was the thing of, okay, I had this dream. So God is trying to tell me something. That means I must keep pushing. Mm -hmm. That means I must hold on. Mm -hmm. But at some point, I realized that, you know what, instead of holding on and whatnot, sometimes we just need to surrender. Sure. Sometimes just let what falls fall. Oof. Just let it fall. Let it break if it breaks. Just be you. It got to a point where I cut my hair. I was like, you know what, fuck it. Yeah, yeah. Because what the fuck is going on? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah, it, yeah, it happened. Do you, is there a particular moment where you felt like, okay, things are now starting to work out? And do you remember that moment? Yeah, I do. Um, I think that time where I realized that things are starting to work out mm -hmm. um, was when, okay, first I, I applied for the job that I'm doing now. Yeah. So the recruitment process takes a very long time. It sure. can take up to a whole year. Sure. So it was that stage where, okay, number one, you, you submit the application. They call you to come and write um, a psychometric test. You go write and then months pass. Now you have to go to the physical assessment. You have to be fit. So I went there. And then again, um, I went for, I think it was the interview. But at the same time, shit is happening this side. Mm. My family is falling apart. And yeah, it was hard. Like it was hard to a point where... Yo, I don't even like talking about this, but to a point where um, the person that's supposed to be there for you, mm -hmm. the person that's supposed to say, no matter how bad it is, yeah. I'm here for you. Yeah. They crush you every chance they get. Yeah. They tell you you're not going to be anything. Huh. And then um, I remember when... I remember when this person at some point was like... um. You know what, Nay? I don't want you in my house anymore. Shit. Yeah, carry on. So this person said, I don't want you in my house anymore. That time, I think we're approaching December. So my siblings are also coming home. So you yeah. can imagine. I'm the older sibling. There's my siblings. When yeah. they come, I must be there for them. Yeah. But then this person is saying, I don't want you anymore in my house. And then now... My siblings came. Okay, my siblings are like my peaceful space. Sure. So now my siblings came and then I'm talking about someone that gave birth to you. Hmm. So when my siblings came, yeah, we went through the struggle together. Mm -hmm. um, at some points, like we didn't have... <laughs> we... I didn't want to talk about this. But we like didn't have access to like the kitchen so you know the kitchen is where the food is sure, sure you don't have access to the bathroom you can't watch tv that's when i stopped watching tv i don't watch tv i don't like watching tv because now it was something that i was deprived of for a reason i didn't i didn't know sure so i was like okay fuck it i'm not gonna watch tv anymore mm -hmm. i don't care mm -hmm. so now we didn't have access to the kitchen where there was food that was me my sibling and my, my sister and my brother <laughs> Okay, <clears throat> and then eventually the person was like, okay, it's not enough that I'm not giving you guys food. So now I'll make sure you don't have lights. Huh. You can't charge your phone. You can't, like, use electricity. You need electricity. Correct. You can't do anything. Now and you must just call water to bath. Yeah. Yes. So we went through that. At the same time, my phone needs to be on. There is that recruitment process that's going on. Mm -hmm. So then I know that my siblings will go back to varsity. I must remain here. I'm done yeah. with school. I'm not getting yeah. a job. Yeah, yeah. And that's where I saw that um, thingy post for the show. Okay. I was like, okay. Now I was calculating because now you have to be smart. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. So I was like, okay. My siblings are living in January. I'm not working still. That recruitment process is taking long. Mm -hmm. I must make a plan. Mm -hmm. So now I saw that um, show post. Okay. Then it was like, you know, when you know that someone doesn't love you, they're just with you for, I don't know, their convenience. Okay. So I'm like, okay, I want to go to this show. I know for sure this guy doesn't love me. Huh. 
But if I go for this show, that means I'll have a place. I also escape this ma- this mess. I will escape this matter. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. I call this guy. I'm like, bruh, can we go on this show? Because I know what kind of a person he is. It's like, yeah, sure, let's go. I'm like, okay, sure, we'll go. In my mind, I know for sure that I am not expecting anything from anyone. Huh. I know for sure that Correct, and correct. I don't give a fuck. Yeah, yeah. So we go there. People can turn on you. Just, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. I didn't even care. Like, yeah. I knew this is what happens. If sure. someone that gave birth to me can do that to me, huh. who are you? Huh. So I went. And then remember, like, we shot for about two months. Mm-hmm. So I had food. Everything I had taken shelter. Care of. Like, now things, you know, are better. Like, sure, way better. Sure. But then now still, I keep praying to God and say, God, you need to make sure when this ends... That begins have something. Correct. So I this kept on going. And while I was still on the show, the process was going on. The show. Sure. I would travel from this side to that side. I remember when I went for the medicals, I was like, okay, yeah, now it's happening. We, we're moving. We're moving. Yeah. yeah. And all the time I'm like, I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm telling my dad, bro, this is what's happening. My dad is like, you must make sure you're there. You yeah. must make sure you go yeah. and you, and you must own. pray about it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm like, and I thank God for my father. And then, yeah, I go. I'm telling you, I think we finished shooting on the 2nd of April. And then when we were done, I was stressed out. And then I called my sister. I'm like, brah, where in Pretoria do you stay? She says, nah, um, I think it was Pretoria East or something. Sure. So I'm like, brah, I want to come to your place and like be there for at least two weeks. I'm hoping and praying things work out. Huh. She's like, no, come, because she knows what we're going through. Correct. She says, you can come. And then I took my things. I went to my sister's place. A week after I got to my sister's place, I got a call to say, uh, you need to come down. People are leaving now for training. I think it was, I came down two days before they left. Sure. And then I came. When I came, the list came out. My name was not there. Huh. My name was not there. And I'm like, where am I going to go? I'm not going back there. Mm-hmm. Okay, now I'm at a point where I do not have a home. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I'm telling you, I went to the wilderness and I prayed. I said, God, Intervene. Not, not this. Yeah. I want to go there. I'm going there. Like, I thought I was going there. Like, I can't be going through all this process for nothing. Sure. Bro, you need to make a plan. Yeah, yeah. You know I don't have a home now. Yeah. You know why I'm here. Yeah. Otherwise, just take me. Yeah. And then we waited. But then... At the same time, my dad would go with me. Like, he would come wake me up and say, bro, let's what go. A man. Yeah. Let's go. We'd go. And then he would tell me, you pray, you face the side. You say whatever. Do not filter anything. Say as it is. Speak if to God. You, yes. If yeah. you feel the need to call upon anyone, yeah. call upon that person. I don't care what you say. Go there, do you. He would just wait there in the car for me. Huh. And then I, I would talk to God, talk to God. Like, you. And then I left. I think we did this for about three days. Two days down the line, I got a call. They're like, okay, you're talking to this person. Um, on this day, you need to like pick this, this and that. You're going for training. Bruh. I cried. But then my dad, because my dad, he pretends as if like he's not an emotional person, but he's very emotional. I remember when I left, he was like, yo, bruh, now I know I can like move from doing shifts because when you do shifts you work you work six to six mm, mm, my dad mm. is turning 60 this year mm, mm. so he had to like work because when you do shifts there's more money okay so you if you know you've got too many responsibilities mm, mm. you take You'd that. Rather do that so when i left for training my dad was like oh i can then finally now rest through monday yeah. to friday yeah, yeah he rested i had a shelter still for a whole year yeah so i'm there doing my training i came back i'm working God is good. All the time, bro. God is so good. I am here. I am working. Things are working out. And we're good. And at this point, I'm happy that now I'm the one that's providing shelter for my siblings. Huh. Something we didn't have. And we had, actually. We had, but I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't want it to be so brief when you speak about your dad. Because it's not every day that strong black men who are great fathers are put on a pedestal. If your dad bumps into this, what would you like to say to him? Yo. Yo, if my dad would bump into this. Yo. I I think I would say. Yeah, well, nice. Yo. Too much. Because mm. I remember 
that guy was there, like he took care of my child. Mm -hmm. He took care of me. Mm -hmm. When I wasn't working, like I would just call him, bro, please bring me one, two, three, and four. Maybe I'll say, bring me two lotions for them to last me for like a few months. He would bring four. I would, he would buy my toiletries mm -hmm. and bring them to me. He would like, he took a contract for me to say, you must have data so you can be able to apply, do whatever. Mm -hmm. If you want to like do your virtual meetings and whatnot, yeah, mm -hmm. go do this. This man, when like, he was born in December. Mm -hmm. In December, when his bonus comes, he shares it amongst us. Mm -hmm. We eat my dad's bonus, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. So I think what I would say to him is that may God keep him, may God protect him, may God like give him all he desires and that we are very grateful to have a dad like him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think um, having him made us really not care that we... Okay, we have a mother, but we don't have a mother. Sure. But it it, it, it really made us forget. Mm -hmm. It still does make us forget because mm -hmm. he's still there. Mm -hmm. He's still there. He's very supportive, honestly. Um, You have a quite a unique story that is not shared many times that broken families are not only caused by men. True. Right? Um, and there's a lady out there who also has had a yearning to have a good mother. Mm. But when they tell people that I don't have a good mother, unfortunately, like you, like every mm. neighbor that I see where my mom is my rock, my mom is my anchor, my mom will break barriers for me. It, it's not everyone who has that mom. Um, yeah. the, the person who's going through that, what can you say to them to, to, to still hold on and pursue their dreams? For a person that doesn't have a mom like that. Yeah, that that amazing mom that everybody thinks everybody has. Yo, I'd say to that person, there's nothing wrong with that. Mm. Secondly, um, what you can do is to learn from that and sure. be a better mother. Yourself. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Be, be what you never had. Oof. I always try that with my son. I think if I look at the way I grew up, the way... I wouldn't say nurtured, but the way I was raised, I'm not happy, especially when it comes from a woman. I try by all means not to be that to my child. Mm. And also I think what makes we meant to be like that, I think it's going into things for convenience. Mm -hmm. If you, if as a woman, you marry a guy for convenience, mm -hmm. that's where the problem comes in. Okay. Because remember, if you're going into this marriage, just because he can provide for mm -hmm. you, but if you go for convenience, believe it or not, you don't love that guy. Sure. So now, if you have to be here because of one, two, three, and four, you're not going to be the best of yourself. Because mm -hmm. now you know, oh gosh, I must like stand this because of one, two, three, and four. What is it that you're going to pour onto other people? Because mm -hmm. you don't have love. I feel mm -hmm. like what yo. I think you should just do better. Yeah, yeah. Just do better. Don't go for convenience. Mm -hmm. Just go where your heart really is happy and at peace. Sure. Then you can like pull out, laugh, peace, and all the good things. <laughs> On a lighter note, before I finish all your tears. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I figured out that part of the reason that you went onto the Ultimatum South Africa on Netflix and applied for the show was that, one, you recognized that the partner you had didn't love you. Mm -hmm. Two, you also wanted to escape your rela your lived reality where at home you were ill-treated. Yeah. Um, just not even just you, your your entire family. And all you had was your dad as your anchor. But clearly, right, and my he was doing his best. And At that time, he can't even do his best because yeah, he's yeah. not at his best as sure, well. Sure, sure, sure. So he's, he's just feeling the brunt of it as well. Pouring from an empty cup. Right. Um, you get to the show and you realize, okay, I'm actually doing this. Um, are you excited or you are genuinely trying to do this because you actually want to end this relationship with your partner? No, I was just, I was just being myself, honestly. Okay. I was just at a point where I'm like, okay, if you want to build this, we can build it. If you don't want to, fine, bye. Mm -hmm. It's just that. Mm -hmm. I was just, I, I think it was, I don't know how to even explain this. You know, when you're like, okay, I'm going there. I don't know if I'll get what I'm going for. Okay. But if I get it, I get it. If I don't, then I don't. It's fine. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, that thing. Yeah. But what put me at ease way more than anything was the fact that at least I'm not there. So I think someone else can look at this and be like, oh, poor Ruth, you went through that with Isaac. 
That was nothing compared to what but I was, was escaping. Yeah, yeah. Nothing. Yeah. That was nothing. Yeah. It didn't even move me. Yeah. It, it, it was a drop in the ocean compared to your... Teaspoon. Ne? Did you feel that when you were going through that, Isaac wasn't there for you too, as a partner? Yeah, he wasn't there. But also, I always tell myself that the way you treat people has a lot to do with the way you feel about yourself. Huh. If you are scared of yourself, you want people to be scared of you. If you think less of yourself, you will go around making sure that people feel less of themselves. Mm. If you don't care about yourself, you will go around ill-treating people, mm -hmm. not care like mm -hmm. how they feel about what you do and what not. So I think I took it as this as how he is for himself. Okay, okay. Do you have any regrets about your conduct on the show and how it eventually appeared on TV? No. <laughs> no, I don't. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I don't. Because, like I said, I was... Thing is, number one, if you take a person who is emotionally not okay, yeah, obviously it's no one's fault because nobody knew. If you take someone that is emotionally not okay and put them in a space where... I don't... Like, have you seen where this is where you are? Mm -hmm. This is the normal, you know. Mm -hmm. This is the reality mm -hmm. of you. So we are there. We Remember, we can't like discuss the show with people that are not in the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't ask for someone else's view. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. this has to remain, remain this big here. Secret, yeah. Yes. So now you are emotionally wrecked. Mm -hmm. Things are happening. You're not taking my decisions, Ako. With your normal self. Yeah. Exactly. So you, you just take your decisions based on how you feel. Sure. And sometimes that not, that's not wise. Yeah. So you hear, you're emotionally wrecked, things are happening, you can't even ask for anyone's opinion. Mm, mm, so mm. you just decide however you see fit. Mm -hmm. So it was that thing. So when I look back at it, I'm like, even if I were to be taken back again, if that was the state of mind I was in, I would have mm. done the same thing again. Sure. Because I wasn't okay. Yes, I wasn't okay. Everything is just happening here. Yeah, yeah. You have to decide here and now. Mm, mm, mm. I, I don't know how to... It's, it's like an accelerated environment of your emotions because you're cocooned in this. It's like you're living in a in bubble. The, exactly. Yeah. There's, yeah. It, it's more like there's no outside world. Sure, sure, sure. It's just the outside world watching. Yeah. You can't... <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. more like they're here looking yeah. at you yeah. and you're just you're not seeing anything. This, this, this is the life now. Would you say the experiment is successful, though, in, in, in building relationships? Because there are there are couples who left the show and they are still together. And uh, um, we could measure that as success for them. I think if, if you were genuine throughout the experiment, then it's successful. Okay. But if you are going to be in the experiment and pretend. Okay. And try to, like outsmart things and people, then it won't be successful. That's why there's like relationships that came out and they do very well. Yeah, yeah. That's why there's those that looked good. Mm -hmm. On TV. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but now. Yeah. Yeah. I think if 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 really you went there with the 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 plan to build yourself and your relationship, you came out very strong. Yeah. You came yeah. out very good. But if you came there to pretend, if you came there to say, oh, no, I'm not going to move like this because remember, people will say this. Because if you do for the people, then it's not for you. you you're wasting your time, actually. Yes, you're wasting yeah. your time because yeah. you have to make your mistakes yeah. and learn yeah. from your mistakes. Correct. Correct. Yes, you have to like, okay, learn and discover things about you and your partner. But if if, if, if you took it as... Oh no, it's a show people are going to watch it. Then uh, I don't think it was successful. Your ending of that show in the last episode was not a wedding proposal. Instead, it was a breakup. Are you glad that it ended in that breakup and were you released? Hundred percent glad. Yeah. Um, I was happy. Yeah, yeah. I think it's it's the best thing that has ever happened. Honestly. Sure. Yeah, and I don't think I'd ever go back to that for anything because. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. 
<laughs> but yeah, I wouldn't, I wouldn't go back, honestly. And I'm happy it happened the way it did. Yeah, yeah. There's yeah. nothing wrong with with how it ended. Sure, sure. It was supposed to. It was supposed to end that way. Yeah. Um, and last but not least about the show, there is there was also an interpersonal bit of drama or relationships that were happening between the ladies and friendships. Um, how do you find being in that accelerated environment with other women? And because I saw there was a point where you called somebody out for being mean and yeah. problematic, right? Yeah. It, it was like you got fed up. Mm. Did that experiment also make you realize that, hey, we are not all girls, girls? Yeah. I think, firstly, when I got there, I saw the ladies. They were so cute and, you know, good. They seemed like good people. But then what I told my, I don't like making friends. That's one thing about me. I don't have too many friends. Yeah. I don't like making friends. So I was like, okay, I'm just going to be here. I see them. They seem like good people and it's fine. We're mm -hmm. just going to like get along, you know, but not in that extent. And then um, it happened that I got too close with one of them. That was Caesar. She's such a darling. Yeah. And then that particular one <laughs> that I had an altercation with, Okay, first, I would notice that she's being somehow, but then I was like, okay, as long as you don't come my way, then it's fine. Mm. And then she kept doing it to this one particular person. I didn't care because she wasn't doing it to me, but I remember there would be times where I'd be like, but you don't have to do that. Yeah, yeah. That, it's not that deep. Yeah. Until she decided to come for me. <laughs> you don't question people you don't know. Yeah, yeah. You, you barely met like a week ago. Exactly. You know? You don't have the right to comment or have opinions about something you've never gone through. Sure. You don't do that. Even if you feel like, okay, maybe, Ruth, I think you shouldn't have done it that way. But have a manner of saying it. Ruth, what made you do that? Then I tell you. And if, if I'm answering you in a way that I don't want this conversation to be too long, get it. Mm, mm, if, I'm, mm. if you're asking me because I'm like, no, I'm fine. Mm, Take mm. that. Correct. Don't be like... But your face looks long, bruh. I said, I'm fine. Sure. Just get off my back. Sure. So it was that thing. So now you come for me. You don't know me. You don't know what I'm going through. And if, I, I think if there wasn't people there, it would, it would have gone too far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because I know I don't go around offending people. Sure, sure. You I respect do. people. I do a lot. Yeah, yeah. Because I know what it's like when you're having a good day and then someone just, just comes, comes and ruins you. your day. Yeah, yeah. You, yeah. I don't know. I'm very emotional. I am very emotional. If you ruin my day in the morning, even at 7 p.m., I'd be feeling so bad about it. Like, I'd be asking myself, what is it that I did to this person? Why did they come for me? Mm -hmm. Like, I I don't know why. I You heard me. I carry it for the rest of the year. Because mm. I don't understand why you just like, go out of your way to come and hurt me. What did I do to you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You spoke about your son quite a few times. Um, being a mother who is a young mother... Uh, and you also had your child when you were quite young, it comes with a lot of challenges. It comes with many ups and downs, um, especially because for a long period you were a single mom. Mm. But right now, what does being a mom mean to you? Yo, I think being a mom, being a mom is, it's it's nice. It's a blessing. You just have to know that this person is actually not yours. Okay. You just like granted that moment to nurture this person. Wow. At the end of the day, you must remember that it is not your plan. That person is not yours. It is in your hands to either nurture or destroy what 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 God's purpose is upon that person's wow. life. Yeah. 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 But I think it, it, it's one amazing thing. It's something that it comes with a very different feeling. Okay. Because now. Yo, you love this person in a very different way. Mm -hmm. I don't think I love myself the way I love my son. Yo. I love myself way too much, but the way I love my son is very deep. I can't even try to explain it. Sure. It's very different. Like, I look at the way I panic. I remember there was this other time where, or oh, my little mom, Tata, she mm -hmm. was like, bro, I can't find you, your son at the gate. What's happening? I'm like, How? Just try and like drive, like, I don't know, wherever. I try and find him. He called again. He was like, I can't find your, your son. I walked out. I remember I was wearing PJs. I, I remembered when I was like on the streets, 
fuck, I'm wearing PJs. <laughs> then I went back, but I, I just thought of, I don't know, man. Something happened, you know what I mean? And you immediately, yeah. And you know, when, when something bad happens to your child, you wish it happens to you at mm. least. That's why I always say, you can hurt me all you want, but if you hurt my child, mm. we are never going to be okay. Mm. I can forgive you 10 times if mm. you hurt me, mm. but if you come for my child, mm. Chai. Yeah. Chai. Yeah, yeah. We are never talking. Yeah. Yeah. The difficulties of being a mother, a single mother, because um, you you didn't mention the presence or the non-presence of your, your, your son's father. Um, what does it do to you uh, in your character? I think having to, having to bear all the responsibilities alone. of being a parent yeah. alone, yeah. it either breaks or makes you. Okay. It depends on how you take it. Sure. It depends on what you want. Yeah. It depends on what you feel when you look at your child. Yeah. Yeah. Because, okay, first... First you get upset. Mm -hmm. First you get hurt. Deal First with the anger. You get very angry yeah, to yeah. say, bro, why would you let me let me do this alone? Sure. What did I do to you? But do you think it's fair? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then eventually you're like, okay, let me do this. Mm. It, but it depends on how you take it. Mm -hmm. other, it breaks other people and I don't blame them. Mm -hmm. It breaks other people because now, remember there was a time where I had to go to school. Mm -hmm. That means I don't have money to take care of my child. Mm -hmm. Imagine if I didn't have a father like mine. Sure. What was going to happen to my child? There was a time where I wasn't working. That was a depressing moment for me. Sure. If my dad wasn't there, if my sister and my brother were not there for me, what was going to happen to my child? Mm -hmm. A lot could have happened, mm -hmm. but it didn't because I had a supportive family. Sure. Do you get that? Mm -hmm. But then now, I think when I look at things... I even text that guy. Sometimes I call him like, bruh, remember I've never said to you, bring me a thousand rand, five thousand rand or whatsoever. Because every time I call him like, I need you to help me with this. He would be like, um, but I'll see. I'm like, for 10 years, January to December, I'm huh. Do I not have those moments? Huh. But then I told him, you're missing out. Because remember, you need to see this person like develop be who they are. into like a whole human being. Sure. See what they love. See what makes them human. Mm -hmm. I told him you are missing out because that boy is such a lovely human being. Huh. He's very nice. He's very caring. He's very loving. Mm. He's very creative. He can literally look at a picture and draw it as it is. Mm. He's always number one on the top 10. Mm. He is forever the top learner. You're missing out. I think for me, it, I, I sometimes take it as a privilege. Okay. Like, I have to, like, experience this all alone. This is all me. Sure, sure. This is all for me. Sure. You have nothing. Yeah. I have all this. Okay, sometimes it is challenging because there needs to be money. Yeah, yeah. You need to be there mentally, emotionally, and however. Yeah, yeah. But, like I said, it depends. It either makes or breaks you. There's somebody who doesn't, who hasn't reached that point like you have where they see it as a privilege that they are raising this amazing child alone and they're still fighting day in, day out, courts, maintenance court, um, fighting with the family of their the, the, the child's father. Um, you, you also spoke earlier about surrendering. Do you mm. think allowing yourself to surrender into that role of being a single mother also helped you have the peace that you have? Surrendering helps you have peace you've never had. Yeah. Because number one, you can force this person to like maybe send money for the child, but you can never force the person to father the child. <laughs> I can take out money out of my pocket, but I will never mother this child. Mm. I don't think, we, okay, maybe we need financial support, but if we talk of a, a parent being in a child's life, if you're a mother, you have to mother that child. If you're a father, you have to father that child. You can't force it out of a person. You can never. And if there's one thing I wouldn't do, as go to courts and say, I want you to give me 2,000 rands. Mm, mm, if mm. you don't want to give me your 2,000 rands, it's fine. Mm. If you're giving me 100 rands, it's fine. If I was paying 350 for the transport, then I'm going to pay 250. Sure. It helps me. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. I forever say this. I do not ever say, give me 5,000 rand. If you're giving me 250, then I'm going to pay 200 rand for the transport. Mm. I take your 250 and add my 200. Mm, 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 mm. I hear you. It's better. Yeah. If you're giving me 500 rands, 
it's fine. I'll get him a, a, a trouser or something. Mm. At least. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Whatever you give. Yeah. Whatever you give. But if you are not there, I think he's only given me 500 this year. Huh. This year. 500 rains. I'm not complaining. It did help because I remember I had to pay for a school trip. I took all the 500 rand and paid for the school trip. Then mm. I only have to buy the outfit and make sure he has like food for that school trip. Yeah. That's something. Yeah. But then if you're not there as a father, then it's sure, a problem. Sure, sure, sure. On that line of surrendering, you seem to have pivoted into this very healthy space mentally and emotionally. And that seems to be centered around God being there for you and you being connected to God. Um, what is the importance of having a relationship with God? Yeah. I think the importance of having a good relationship with God is that that relationship is not only with God. That relationship is with yourself. Because huh. if you've got a good relationship with yourself huh. or if you've got a good relationship with God, that's you. That is you. I think way more than anything, we need to do away with letting religion tell you how to have a, 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 a good relationship I with God. You. I get you. When and how to talk to God. Yeah. Study you. Because mm. God knows you. God knows you. Yeah. If your pastor say pray at 3 a.m., is God saying that to you? Mm. Where, man, where is it written, by the way, that 3 a.m.? Exactly. <laughs> I've got moments where maybe let's say I'm just cleaning my place. Sure. Driving. Anything. You just feel like talking to God now. Sure. You just sure. feel like saying something Absolutely. to God. Do that. Yeah. Do that. It's very important. Yeah. It is very important. Because now you're learning yourself and then you're learning how God works in you. Because mm -hmm. the way God works for me is not the way he's going to work for you. The way God comes through for you is not going to be the way God comes through for me. Mm -hmm. The way I see God is not going to be the way the same way you see God. Mm. Maybe for you to see God, you, you need to have a Ferrari. Mm. For me to see God is maybe, let's say, have peace in my heart. Sure. For me to see God... Rest. To be at rest. To be at rest. Yeah. To be like... Have you ever seen where you're like, I don't have a lot of things, but I love where I am right now. I'm at peace. I've got nothing that worries me. That's me. That's me seeing God. Also, I feel like another way to see God is feeling like I'm actually moving towards my life's purpose. Mm -hmm. And I feel like definitely you're there at the moment. I think I'm I'm still getting there. Sure. Yeah, I'm still getting there. Because remember when, when we grow up, we, we've got like a certain way our parents do things. When I grew up, my parents were attending a certain church. Mm -hmm. And there's, you remember there's also what's this culture. Mm-hmm, mm -hmm. And I did realize that I do not relate to this church. Mm -hmm. I do not relate to this culture. Okay. Obviously, I'm not going to forget that I'm black yeah. and I'm Zulu. Yeah. I'll never forget that. But I think what I would encourage people, especially women, be more spiritually aligned. Okay. Way more than anything. Sure. Do not depend on culture. Do not depend on religion. Because spirituality has to do with you. <laughs> spirituality has to do with what God wants you to be. Spirituality mm -hmm. has to do with how you connect with the universe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nobody can ever give you that. Yeah. No culture, no religion will ever give you that. Yeah. It's in you. Yeah. We're nearing the end of our conversation. Um, this is premiering in 2024 towards the last half of the year. Um, you said your son is 10 years old. One day he'll turn 18 and he'll have good cognitive dissonance about understanding things, about finding who he is. Um, and he will realize everything we, we've spoken about, what his mother has gone through, what his mother has fought to raise him and be the gentleman that he's becoming. Um, in 30 seconds, you can look into that camera. Um, what would you like him to feel about who you are and what you've done for him when he's seeing that, when he's older? Yo, I think I would like for my son to know that um, I've tried to move the best way I know. Mm -hmm. I would want him to know that there's nothing I've ever loved way more than him. Huh. And that I still would move mountains for him. Sure. I would. Yeah. Last but not least, I ask almost every guest this. What's this one thing in life you know for sure that you're absolutely certain of? 
one thing that I know for sure. Yeah, and that you believe in completely and you're absolutely certain of. Yo, I think if there's one thing that I'm certain of is that things always work out. Sure. Yeah. yeah. They always do. They always do. They just fall into place, whether you've cried, whether sometimes it's smooth, whether you thought you've lost everything. Yes. Yeah. Eventually things work out. Yeah. And for the best. Yeah. Ruth Katide, um, it's been a privilege having this conversation with you. Um, this conversation was on rebuilding your faith. This conversation was re-understanding your purpose. This conversation was trusting God to save you from what you believe is a mess. Yeah. This conversation was also about having a black, powerful father who's present, who's there for you, who loves you, and that those type of men exist. You were also very kind enough to be vulnerable with us and share that there are also broken families that are not the perfect family. Yeah. And I just want to say to you that it's okay. Thank you for being vulnerable with us because you don't understand how much empowering your story is to the person who's consuming this. There are many people who are going through what you're going through. I know when you're going through it alone, it feels like it's just me and my family. It's just me and my sisters and my siblings. Yeah. But trust me, somebody who wants it all to, to wants to end their life won't end their life because you chose to share that I've come out of that. Yeah. You can come out of that, you know? Yeah. So thank you for your time. It's been thank a privilege. You. Thank you for letting you all. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And thank you guys for watching. I'll see you guys on the next episode. Introducing the epitome of luxury living. Galu Luxury Villas and Suites, your private sanctuary of opulence and elegance. Nestled amongst the lush, sun-kissed landscapes of Durban, KwaZulu-Natal, this Galu Luxury Villa is a paradise of tranquility, offering breathtaking panoramic views of the neighborhood. Step into a world of refined luxury where every detail has been meticulously crafted to create an atmosphere of sophistication and comfort. This villa is kept within a gated and secure property for your peace of mind. The Kalu Villa is available for both short-term and long-term stays, making it the ideal location for your next vacation or special event. This villa boasts spacious living areas and floor-to-ceiling windows that flood the interior with natural light, making you feel at one with the surrounding beauty paired with multiple terraces, an outdoor lounge and a dining area. Live the dream, make memories and indulge in the life you deserve. Contact us today to book your stay or to learn more about this exquisite property. Your oasis of opulence awaits.